Lisa also can help answer questions or whatever. But this this rookery, um, it's actually around the corner by the light station where the very first elephant seal comes were born. But this, these two beaches are the biggest and the widest and they quickly became the ones that were most populated. But in the old days when this started in the early 90s, it, it's kind of, it looks like it did on the south side where there's a bunch of dunes. So these dunes went down into the beach and then there was a road, the coast highway, and people would just pull over and stop and crawl into the dunes and get down on the beach. They'd put their kids on a seal and try to take a picture. And after a few years, it was chaos. It was total chaos. It completely blocked the highway because there was no place to pull off. Now there's a little bit, there was no place to pull off. And so they just stopped their cars and get out and then jumped the fence. There was a fence and they put up, they tried putting up white stakes. I'll pass this around. You they can tried see putting up great pictures. big rocks. They tried putting up signs, but the people wanted to go down and see these. They didn't know what they were. None of us knew what they were. Nothing anybody had ever seen. And they, they just run right down onto the beach. Yeah, and so it just created a really, really difficult situation here. And so over time, and with the local community here, this organization, Friends of the Elephant Seal, started sending people down here to try to get people to stay off the beach. And we had signs, as Diana was saying. There was all kinds of things to try to get them, but it really wasn't successful at all. Everybody did their best, but you can't patrol it 24-7. So to make a long story short, there, this land belonged to the Hearst uh, Ranch at that time and they really didn't do much with it. Um, Caltrans of course is responsible for the road and then there's State Park. So over a, a group of years, it's kind of a phenomenal thing, it's a real success story. State Parks, the Hearst Ranch, Caltrans. Anybody I'm forgetting? And uh, friends of the elephant. And friends seal. of the elephant seal. Everybody got together and they they did a land swap. So state park swapped land with the Hearst Ranch. They got this whole area here and um, became responsible for it. And then Hearst got a different piece of land from state parks. But Caltrans built the pullout, this parking lot, which is great. But they're responsible for that parking lot. And eventually, state parks put in this nice boardwalk here. They started on the south side, and about five or six years later, they put in this north side. One thing that should have left out is that they moved the highway in. Yeah, because we had at, at least one, I remember that one, uh, that, that some poor tourists coming from the north, and all of a sudden, this huge animal rose up out of the middle of where. <laughs> hit it and it killed the car and it killed the seal and it killed the guy but that's when the, all of a sudden roadkill yeah, elephant road seal roadkill yeah i mean it was whoa and so they moved the entire road in in order to make that part yeah that's very true so it's a very good success story so i know you guys will get frustrated with bureaucracy when you see things but it can work and when people come together and they all have a common goal this is what can happen. And so now we literally have, well, I don't know, close to a million visitors a year come through here. This we, should be the biggest thing in the county was Hearst Castle. Yeah. And we're three times bigger than Hearst Castle. Is oh, you are now. Oh, oh, wow. We're free. Show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So and people makes, don't know where they are. They, yeah. they come down, they see all the cars, they pull in. Yeah. And it's a nice parking lot. As you know, driving up and down this coast, there's very few parking lots where people can Kind of enjoy this amazing coast yeah. and so and it's free i think that's a big point point we have docents here every day 365 days a year we're here from usually 10 in the morning till four or five in the afternoon and so we see the bulk of the customers but many come through at other times it is open for them so um good success story the seals they've been habituated a little bit um for sure but they as long as people stay on this side of the fence you know we're okay occasionally we get some don't realize a fence means to stay on this side and um, you know we have to deal with them the rangers their headquarters are at hearst cattle castle so they're not far so if we need to call them for any reason uh, 
probably the biggest reason is drones because it's a drone free area. Um, they'll, they'll be over here in a short amount of time and deal with it. But most people, if you let them know that they're going to take their drone away, they take it down and they're take off. Right. So even though they don't really take their drones, yeah. <laughs> so is the drone ban because of... Uh, state Park, it's just State, state Park. Parks. So as docents, we have to deal with State Parks rules and regs. This is NOAA out here. This is a marine sanctuary. So we have their rules and regs. We have Caltrans here. So you kind of have to figure out who's responsible for what when dealing with things. So as an organization, we wanted to have trash cans out here and we wanted to have bathrooms. I think for 20 years we've been trying to get a no go. It limits how many of us can come out. Yeah. There's, there's no place to go to the bathroom. Yeah. And the trash, um, even if we bring out trash cans, they fill up in no time and then they start spilling over. So for the most part, you know, we ask people to just like you're hiking, pack it in, pack it out, but it just doesn't happen. So we do have people that come out here and pick up trash. State Parks sends people out to pick up trash, but that's a problem, like everywhere. Uh, the beaches stay relatively clean, fortunately, because no one's there and we have this wind that just blows everything out of here. But it's really a neat success story, and I know for Diana and myself, it's really nice to be part of something that actually works and works well. Yeah. And, um, you know, we feel real encouraged by it. So the guys like Phil that you're talking about that started it, he was with the very first class and they wrote, wrote a the book, book about elephants. Nobody seals. knew what they were. Yeah. They were these moving logs on the beach. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it, it's pretty cool. And we do have different organizations. So we have FES and we have a board and a lot of docents and a lot of stuff that goes on through FES. There's also an ESAG, which is an elephant seal, kind of a multi-organization, which includes Caltrans, State Parks, FES, uh, NOAA with the Discovery Center, and the guys from PH Blancas, and they all meet, um, I don't know, six times a year, and, and dealing with the elephant seals. So for instance, every couple years they end up on the ranch. So if we do have rain, they tend to go up the creeks and, few curious ones and so we have to deal with those kinds of things because every single car that drives down the highway and sees them calls us every single <laughs> and even though they're fine over there and they'll eventually get back um, it causes like chaos <laughs> it's really fun <laughs> yeah <laughs> occasionally they come up in the parking lot too um, i don't know how they get through you know they break a fence or whatever they are big i mean if you guys are huge animals they can just kind of do what they want. So occasionally they do. And um, we have to call the right people to get them down there. Marine Mammal is somebody we haven't talked about, but uh, we do work with them as well. And if there's an entanglement on a seal, depending on where the seal is and the time of year, they can help with that and get the entanglement off. Uh, That's how big yeah. they are. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but it is tough because it's a rookery, so they don't want to go down and disturb the seals, the rest of the seals, while they're trying to help one. Um, another thing that I brought to show you was the range of this rookery. It's about eight or nine miles long. These just happen to be the best viewing points, but I don't know how far north you're going to. Oh, uh, we're going all the way. Okay, so... Um, so we'll be at Pages Blancas after you guys. Okay. Oh, the light station? Mm -hmm. Oh, great. Way north of that is a place called Arroyo de la Cruz, and that's like the most north for our rookeries, elephant seals. And then it goes all the way down, and this is across from Hearst Castle down to the south. That's San Simeon, the uh, cove and the pier. This is affectionately called uh, Loser's Beach or Bachelor's Beach. So during the breeding season, when the males fight over the females, you have a winner and a loser. This is where the losers end up. And, and they need a place to kind of rest and heal up. They're just kind of been bruised and battered around a bit. So they end up at this cove. We have another group of docents down here because this is a public beach. There are people, dogs, all kinds of stuff. And so they're down there trying to keep people away. They look kind of like a log. They're not moving necessarily too much. Um, and people don't notice them. But when they do move, they can move very quickly. And if they want to fight with another male down there, it happens very quickly. And 
it, you know, they can just, it can be a problem with humans or animal interaction down there. So th that's a real uh, kind of a sensitive beach in uh, December, January, February. And the tourists seem to think that because they're on the beach, they must be friendly. <laughs> and they'll want to take their little kids down and get a selfie with them. And out, she'll be telling me not to go, and my husband's going to land like this. Yeah. There's some hills down there. Yeah. Up here, they, they figure it out. But not down there, they figure, okay, those are fair game. Yeah. So um, you were talking about some of the studies that the students do. So we actually have docents down here that are actually tracking the interactions, and they have a, a grade, basically, of how bad the interaction was. And so they're keeping track of that over time and seeing what's happened and what kind of, with the pandemic it was tough it was tough because we really couldn't talk to people um that's over and so they're going to continue to track all of that we also have interns that work with fes and they do a variety of different projects and, and research on this rookery in cal poly yes and um that's been a real successful program. Last year, they were looking at how far away the, the, the uh, pups were moving from the mothers. And they would use all those remote beaches. They wouldn't use this one because there's too many people and different kinds of interactions. But they go to those remote beaches to try to do those kinds of studies. So some of these down here, they would be down here and up here. Um, if you go to the old motel, are you going to meet yeah, them there? Yeah. Uh, we'll stop at the old motel, yeah. Okay, there's, you should walk out to the bluff there. A lot yeah, of elements. Get out of the seals. car and walk to the bluff. Cool. And if any of you are interested, this is just a personal commercial, okay? <laughs> State Parks wants to put in a headquarters there and a campground there. There's a lot of elephant seals and I just see a huge potential for problems. So if anybody wants to work on that. It's only been abandoned for like what, like 17 years or something like that so far. <laughs> yeah, but it's now they did some kind of swap too, and it's now State Park. Oh, really? That's, and that little house that's there, uh -huh. they own all that, and they're just thinking it would be a great place for a campground, which it would, except there's elephant seals, and you cannot keep people off the beach if they're camping there. So you're talking about visitors. So what happened during COVID? You guys said you had you had more than normal, or about normal, or what, what was what was? I mean, obviously not the foreign visitors that we typically we get. We didn't right. have the foreign visitors, but we had. I it was near normal numbers. Wow. Because people would come out here because they could. Because it was outdoors. Yes. Yeah. And uh, as docents, at the beginning, we couldn't come out here, although they did, but without jackets. And <laughs> um, just like anyone else, we wanted to be out here and see what was going on. It didn't bother the seals at all. They were exactly the same. Um, they, they went through their same process. They didn't care whether we were here or not. Um, but I think we did expose more people to the elephant seals that way. And then as soon as the pandemic, we could see which countries were allowed in yeah. one by <laughs> one by one. Because they land in San Francisco and then they're here the next day. So it's kind of fun. And so, so now that we're, I mean, not, we're not done with the pandemic, but now they're out of the craziest time of the yeah. pandemic. Is it, is it, um, about like, uh, normal? Is it increased? Is it, well, what's, what's the overall trend in terms it's of visitation? Huge. Yes. <laughs> it's I, I, huge. I think and it's limited it's to two. I don't know why, but it's been decided that they're only supposed to be two docents per session. No, no. But the, the sign-up thing says it's full. Yeah, well, I think it's just um, we, as every other volunteer organization, have lost volunteers. I think across the board, uh -huh. everyone's lost volunteers because, A, they've either found something else to do or we tend to be an older uh, population of right. people and, you know, they're not, they don't want to, it's cold, it's windy, you know, they don't want to come out necessarily. So I think that's part of it, it's just the number of people. So we went from about 100 to I think we're in about 60 now. In we Friends have, of the Elephant Seal. Yes, Friends mm -hmm. of the We have seal. 205, according to Kathy, last week, oh. that, but that are supposedly, but I haven't seen But them. not everybody shows up. Not everybody <laughs> shows up, yeah. So anyway, that's, a, that's something that all organizations are struggling with, whether it's arts, whether it's outdoors, whether, it doesn't matter. Um, volunteers are tough, so we're all trying to get them. Did you see the nature of the interact? Or did people linger more? You think yeah. during the pandemic? I uh -huh. think so. Mm -hmm. One of the other areas we are uh, haven't built back 100% our school groups because they're on the bubble right. in terms of whether right. they're doing field trips or not. Right. 
and so we don't quite have as many as normal, but uh, we're still getting them. Cool. So, and then they may come as Girl Scouts or Boy Scouts rather than their third grade right. class, that sort of thing. But yeah. Cool. You guys have questions? So they inhabit, uh, elephant seals inhabit spots that are like not protected. Is this kind of the most densely populated area? Or? Yeah, and by protected, if you mean the fence. Right. Yes. Okay. But nevertheless, if you look at this coast, uh -huh. it's hard to get down to a lot of these beaches. Right. And so there's somewhat natural protection. Um, like if you were to hike between here and the light station where you guys are going, there's a, a place called Middle Beach, and it's kind of like the biggest cove out there. It's kind of the elephant seals out there, but you really can't get there. Right. Okay. And so That's they natural. natural protection. Yes. But if you go up to Arroyo de la Cruz, uh -huh. State Parks has put in beautiful hiking trails out there. Uh -huh. You just go from the parking lot right down to the beach. Yeah. And there's signs that say, "Don't," you know, just like this one warning. Right. But yeah, you're right there. Right on the beach, can, so. can you tell maybe maybe that would help if you talk about the overall so exploitation history and then and then the recovery of the elephant seals okay just if you think of them in terms of uh, the whaling when whaling was going on they were hunted for oil these guys were too and you look at them they're sitting ducks they just if, when they're on the beach oh yeah please oh, sorry. when they're on the beach they're resting they need to rest when they're at sea they're swimming and diving 24 7 um, they need to rest. As for hunters, if they understood their kind of um, schedules, they, they just shot up. The whole colonies would be wiped out. And so all of them in, um, in a, people probably picked the worst spot. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> um, when you said that um, they, they um, fight over the female, right? Yes. Um, I, I've noticed they've been like, kind of, like growling at each other, like is that like messing those, around. Those are two young males. Oh, okay. It's on the white chromosome all the way. <laughs> <laughs> if you think of puppies, kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 And if you watch, they're very careful to only challenge somebody with the same size nose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so anyway, they were hunted all over the islands, all over whatever was on the mainland. And then there was a small colony on uh, Guadalupe. Island all extinct Mexico. except for Guadalupe. They were declared extinct. Yes. And at this very, very small colony, the Mexican government, they protected them. They put out sentries to guard for them, which is amazing because it's in the middle of nowhere. But they protected them, and um, the Smithsonian wanted to protect them too, but they did it by killing the last two they could find and stuffing them. <laughs> I mean, it's bizarre. That Preserving they, them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's really weird, but at that time, that's what, they, that's what they did. So think how far we've come. But in any case, that little colony, some people say there were 20, some say 12, however many, they were protected. This entire North American elephant seal population that and it's about 250,000 today. This rookery has about 25,000. And that's called a genetic bottleneck yes. <laughs> because they came from a small group yeah. mm -hmm. and when they tried to tell who the father was of pups they did a test in South America. They're on the other side of South America. Um, they could tell who the father was. When they did it here they couldn't because the father and the other males are all so similar, they can't tell who the father is. That's a genetic bottleneck. Yeah. One good virus can take them all. Yeah. But so far, they've been healthy. Um, as we, far as we know. We, yeah, our rookery has been healthy and it's growing for the most part. We don't know how global warming is gonna impact these guys. We do know like the, I don't know, study gray whales, the populations are impacted by being able to find food. They're struggling right now. I, they all eat in the same place up in the Aleutian Islands. We don't know how that's gonna impact them. Now the part that has impacted them is they can't handle, they're, they've got a layer of blubber like this, so they're not too cold out in the water because they're mammals, they're the same temperature we are. So they've got a big layer of, of fat. Well, that works fine in the water. And in fact, they haven't had a problem with the warming water, but when they come out onto the beach, 
and they're just dying. It's just so hot on the beach. And you'll see as soon as the sun's been up a while, they'll be throwing sand on themselves, sunscreen. So they're actually, they're moving north. Not, not fast, but moving north because it's just too hot on this to get out. Yeah, and we don't know if, it, if it'll impact the rookery itself. Um, I do have a map here too that I brought you guys of rook, various rookeries. And while she's pulling that, I'll just say that, that so this is, a, this is an indicator of success, right? If the population wasn't growing, they wouldn't need to have expanded down here in the 90s. So this is, yeah. so I, I think, you guys correct me, I think we're now, the estimates now are we're at pre-exploitation levels. So the amount oh, of yeah. elephant seals we have in our, in the state, in our region, um, is a success story, right? So diversity is not there genetically, but numerically, we've recovered the biomass. You guys can have that if you want. And you asked about the protection, and she went, you mean the fence, because they are protected. Mm -hmm. yeah, They're not law. endangered, right. but they are protected. 1972 Marine Mammal Protection Act. Yeah. If you guys watched the whaling lecture, you heard to talk about that. And you know, it is really sad. I'm such a uh, college group, I can talk about this, but I don't know, two, three years ago, we did have some idiots go down there and kill a seal. Really? But I want you to know really? that the guy's in jail. They, they did stay. Intentionally, like tried to, like, oh, yeah. wow. Very intentional. Wow. And we don't have any cameras. Oh, my God. We don't have any cameras out here, but we got the uh, rangers involved, the police involved, and I don't know how they tracked the guy down, but they did. He lives in Santa Maria somewhere, but he is now living in jail. And so that, uh, although it was terrible and sad, it is nice to know that the laws worked and um, he won't be doing that anymore. I didn't know that. Oh, sorry. No, no, that's good. That's, I mean, I mean, not good, good, but it's effective, just, effective enforcement, effective enforcement. To, to make all that happen, but it did, it did happen. Cool.